This is by far the oldest amp I've ever had come in. It's one of the oldest amps I've ever seen, let alone eventually had a chance to play. This is a 1936 or 1937 Gibson EH150. This is the amp that was sold to accompany the Charlie Christian model guitar. Is at the uh, ES250 with the Charlie Christian pickup, which is one of the first production electric guitars. So this will be interesting to dive through. I'm not going to power it on until I've given it a full inspection. I, given the the peak at the speaker cone I just got, looks like it's had some work done in the past. It may be pretty good, may need a lot of work. Interestingly, the rear on these opens up like a suitcase. So, let's see what we see. Okay, it looks like this has had some work done on it already. Looks like a new rectifier tube that the socket's loose. Looks like someone might have uh, given the chassis a new finish. Um, different uh, 6L6s, or not 6L6s, sorry. These are 6N6s, U.S. Navy Sylvania. And can I take this one out with a the speaker there? Unlabeled. So they may be a good match for each other. We'll find out on that. Put those to the side. And some a 6F6. And I can't see what this one is. A 6J5. And the rectifier is a big old bottle. 5Z3. So I'm going to see what I need to do to separate the speaker from the output transformer and then pull the chassis out and take a look and make sure everything inside looks safe before we apply any power. Anyway, let me uh, open this up and see what I can see. It appears that this has been recapped very well at some point in the past. Got some F and T's here and here and some more down here. Um, I have not looked up the schematic for this. I will if I need to, given the fact that the wires coming out of the, uh, coming through the chassis here are going into a cover on the speaker. And given the age of the amp, I would expect that that would be a field coil, which is just covered by a, a bell end kind of thing. Uh, but there are two additional transformers here. Usually you would have a field coil rather than a choke um that activates the speaker and that may be what's happening here i'm not sure why there's two additional tra transformers i will find out if i need to if if i just need to verify that the thing is safe and working well then i won't go any farther i don't need to charge the guy any more than that we we'll just get a chance to hear a unique old amplifier a lot of change components in here not entirely sure about that solder joint right there i, I will be poking and prodding on all the solder joints in a moment off camera just in case i see anything that's uh, dodgy. I just want to make sure everything's as, as good as possible. And it's also possible that some of the remaining original components, like this resistor here, um, or some of these over here, may need to be changed, depending on how it sounds and performs. And some, I, I guess I should get the schematic just so I can look at it and see what's going on and know what voltages to expect. But uh, I'm going to uh, power this on with my current limiter and see where we're at. All right, I've got through my Variac, which is set to like 30 volts right now, and the current limiter, I'm going to power it on and bring it up until this light starts to glow or until my warning bulb for the current limiter says otherwise. Since it's been recapped, it's going to be a fairly bring, quick bring up. I just want to see what's going on. Probably needs to be about 110 with the old transformers. The light comes on there, about 60 volts. We're at 80, 90, 100. Begin to hear a hum, and there was a little bit of a crackle, but nothing's happening with the current limiter. Bring up to 110. Pretty normal current draw based on the bulb, you know, a, a very dim glow. Hearing a little bit of a scratchiness is with the volumes off. Not hearing microphonics, that's good. Let's bring the uh, microphone input up. A 
A little bit of noise. I need to see if that's DC or just a dirty pot. Let's do the same thing for the instrument volume. Instrument volume is much quieter. At least as far as the noise level goes. I'll make sure in a moment we have signal. There's a little bit of noise there when I turn it all the way down. And we have normal tone and bass tone. That switch may just not have been used in a really long time. Let me get my meter and check the that pot. Maybe that this just needs a little bit of a clean and possibly a less noisy tube here and there. You got two volts DC here. Let me check the uh, schematic and make sure that's not just some weirdness of this uh, old amplifier as I drop a tube shield to the ground. Let me check uh, DC on the input jacks before I hook up a guitar to it. Nothing on that input. Is it changed with a switch? Nothing on that input. Negligible there. And this, the jacks feel nice and tight. Good connection still. So that's, that's promising. Let me hook up a guitar and see what sounds we get out of this old beastie. Sounds like a weak tube. Microphone input. microphone input has got a lot of gain because the microphones in 1936 needed a lot of gain to get up to a level. So with a guitar, that microphone input becomes what you just heard, a little proto-heavy metal sound. And given that that speaker has been reconed, I think you could trust it. I don't think that would damage anything. I wouldn't do that if that were looking fragile. So I need to pull up the schematic and... Uh, Take a look at the instrument channel wiring and see which tube is used for that and if there are alternates on the market. I certainly don't have any spares for those. And I need to see if uh, DC on the microphone volume is normal. So I'll be right back. So I finally found the schematic that matches this very early EH-150 and was able to verify that indeed, as I thought, this 10 nanofarad cap, which is hung off the plate of this tube, is the one that goes through this shielded tube to the microphone volume pot, and that's where we have a 200 volt, I'm oh, sorry, two volts, big difference. Uh, anyway, it's just a very, very old, more than 70 year old cap here. So no big surprise that this thing needs to be changed out. I happen to have some that'll be very, very suitable. And everything else in the app measures okay. If we have any weakness at that point, uh, we may just need to get a different tube. The uh, tube in question for the uh, low volume instrument channel is the 6N7, which is available. So let me change out that cap and we'll see where we're at. New 10 nanofarad Mallory 150 there with a little bit of shrink wrap so it doesn't touch anything it shouldn't touch. Let's see how the uh, microphone channel does now. And all that DC is gone off the volume. is just the uh, clasps that hold the rear on. Uh, the entire thing seems to be made of some kind of heavy-duty cardboard uh, as far as the cabinet goes. So it's going to rattle until it's all sealed up. 
I'm not that concerned about that. The next thing is just to see what's going on with the low gain on the instrument channel. And I suspect it's just that uh, week six and seven. Is that right? Yeah, six and seven. Sorry, I have a hard time remembering sequences of letters and numbers, especially ones I don't use very often, like a six and seven. So I think we just got a weak, weak tube. And going through the schematic, uh, the explanation is here for the extra transformers I was a little bit con confused about. This thing has a field coil and a choke. So that's kind of unusual. So it's got a field coil, a choke, an output transformer, a power transformer, and a transformer used in place of a phase inverter. So that's pretty typical of the period, but I, I, I'm used to seeing either a field coil or a choke in an amp. It's rare for me to see both. I don't work on a lot of pre-World War II amps because there aren't a lot of pre-World War II amps still kicking around. But I think this is gonna be a great amp once I get that low gain tube sorted on the instrument channel. And you know, the, the major lifting is already done by changing that one 80 plus year old capacitor. We'll say 2023 minus 1936. It's old.